Hello everybody, it's Oshaziz here. I'm going to try to uh, explain the Tesla coil as simply and as quickly as possible so I can show you a few things. Uh, essentially what the uh, Tesla coil is, is you have a driving circuit which in this case right here I'm using <coughs> a circuit that came up out of one of these bug zappers right here. This uh, particular one isn't the exact one that I got the uh, the uh, circuit out of but it's similar to the one and uh, it, this one here I actually put on four extra 500 volt capacitors to give it a little bit more of a of a up there Ew, I didn't hold it there let's try that again do 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 there we go anyway so you can actually beef these up a little bit and that's another thing I wanted to talk about with this little circuit right here this has uh, some capacitors down on this end right here and you can actually add more capacitors to make a larger bank anyway <clears throat> when you have your Tesla coil you have a driving circuit and then it goes in across the spark gap which in this case I'm using a little reed switch for and then the uh, the primary coil over here let me zoom down in better I may have to take the uh, camera off and shake it up a bit okay well let's see I'm gonna see if I can get in closer with the camera anyway you got your driving circuit all right well this one here is uh, there we go let's see if I can hold steady all right, this one here is out of a bug zapper, the little bug zapper fly swatter, and uh, it's a pretty powerful little circuit. The uh, original transistor that was on there, I drove it. <coughs> it was supposed to only be a three volt system, and I drove it with nine volts, so I burnt that little transistor out, and I I soldered in three wires right there. And I made this external breadboard here that I could put replacement transistors in. This is obviously not the same transistor that came out. And so it gives me the option if I burn one out I can change it real quick. So it's really simple. You can get these circuits out of those uh, bug zapper fly swatters. And uh, I found out the hard way that running it with a 9 volt battery gives that thing a massive amount of juice. And I... Uh, basically shocked the crud out of myself because I was holding on to the circuit board when I plugged the battery in <laughs> but anyway you go from down here from essentially what's a Tesla coil right there it's a, basically a step up transformer and uh, it uh, charges up the capacitors which in turn uh, shoots across the spark gap and you can see the black inside that uh, little reed switch down I can't hold it steady let me try all right well there's a reed switch there it's kind of blurry but uh, that's what I used as my spark gap over here you have the primary which is pretty pretty simple uh, just a pancake coil made out of some windings of uh, just uh, some wire that I had laying around and you can obviously see that the secondary which is the tall tower portion of there is not wound oh, on it all oh, shaky it's not wound very good uh, but uh, still still works anyway uh, didn't even count the turns just wound it around a cardboard tube and normally this wire right down here which is a part of the secondary normally goes to the ground in this case I've got it on the ground side of this circuit and I need to twist that back together before I try to use it but uh, what happens is when you initialize your power source it uh, charges up a capacitor bank which is on this circuit right here there, there we go and then when the capacitors get fully charged it jumps across the spark gap which in turn fires a pulse through the primary coil which is the one wound flat pancake style down here on the bottom well that energizes a field starts to send energy up this coil right here which in turn causes the uh, the uh, causes the uh, 
energy to increase to some extent, kind of amplifies it, but that's not where the total amplification comes about. After it pulses, before it has a chance, before the field has a complete chance to drop, then it pulses again, which hits that field again, and then it keeps on repeating it real fast. See, Tesla used a knife switch, and he was trying to figure out why it is that every time he hit that knife switch really fast, that it would uh, it, it would send a surge of power, which in turn ended up being uh, what ended up creating the Tesla coil. And so from that point, when you're going up to secondary, you have what's known as a top load. I just made this top load here out of some strips of uh, stainless steel. And so your windings, which would normally be your, your ground wire, which is this wire at the bottom of this coil secondary, would go to the earth ground, and then the other end of it would go to your top load up here. And so, let me put this on there because I'm shaking off. I'm already making you all dizzy. So anyway, to make a long story short while I'm wiring this back together, um, basically you're punching up the energy. You get uh, all this energy built up on the top load because of capacitance. And then if you get the energy high enough, you actually get what's called breakout through the top load. That's where you see those cool lightning bolts and everything. And this one obviously isn't going to be that powerful, but if you want, if you're interested in Tesla coils, this is a simple solution. And if you need any help, you can contact me on Skype or ShazizRadio.com, and I'll walk you through step by step what to do. But I hope this video is informative enough. Anyway, like I said, this had a tiny transistor on there. I overpowered it with a nine volt battery. It was normally only set up for three volts. There's and this one here, it's got a couple uh, C batteries, so, er, dear, there you go. It's a little bit more powerful than some of them. And so the circuit out of this could probably make a, a pretty good miniature Tesla coil. So if you want to work with wireless energy transmission and you want to try to, you know, just uh, have, have a little nifty Tesla coil you can tinker with, this is uh, probably the cheapest and the best bet, because you can get these, uh, I think I paid probably five bucks for that one there yeah I've seen them anywhere from three to seven dollars depending on how well they're made or whatever some of them come with safeties on them and over here uh, Ryan Abrams over at Abrams lab made a uh, Slayer exciter which is a nifty little circuit that you can also find on my website on the podcast page there's pictures you can uh, download for free and uh, it shows you the really simple circuit well what the Slayer Exciter is doing is pretty much exactly what the uh, Tesla coil is doing. It just does it a little different way. The transistor is basically like the Tesla's knife switch. Uh, the faster you flip that thing, the faster it charges up, and then it sends the signal up and up and up and up, and before the signal gets a chance to collapse, it, it fires again and so on and so forth. Anyway, uh, I'm going to try to fire this thing up a little bit which you're not going to see any breakout obviously but in order for you to see that it is actually transmitting I'm going to have this uh, little AM radio going I'll put it over here it's in between channels and it's picking up a little bit of disturbance from the AC Alright, so uh, you should see the spark gap down there. Yeah, got to hook the battery right if you're going to hook it. And the, uh... Alright, listen to that radio. And if you look closely, you can see the reed switch, the spark gap going off right there. Now you can use the open air gap and it actually sounds kind of cooler because... Uh, um, it's popping like pop popcorn but uh, watch whenever I hit this knife switch quick which I'm not I'm not really using a knife switch I'm just using the battery as a knife switch watch that fluorescent bulb you see that sudden surge and then it levels out well that's what I'm talking about see Tesla figured out if I see if I keep hitting this over and over really fast alright well, once it levels out to its 
maximum potential. That's uh, pretty much all it's got. And keep in mind, this is not tuned. When uh, you talk about Tesla coils, uh, the, the key is uh, re resonance. And you can get these things to act as antennas, a receiver and a transmitter, if they're perfectly tuned. Same amount of windings. So if you put 100, 100 turns on one, you put 100 turns on the other. If they're same, they should resonate with each other if you got them tuned right. But you can see right there that... Uh, <laughs> that's that little, uh, that's that little, um, circuit out of the bug zapper. And I can get really far away. I don't know, you can, I know you can't see this. But you can see, I can stretch it way, you can still hear it. So it's sending that wave out pretty doggone far. But the strength of the wave is obviously not not very far so anyway if this thing is tuned a little bit better you can see that little fluorescent light coming on there I can't go very far the wireless transmission ain't very far away from that um, I don't know if you can see the LED on there it is you can see the LED lighting up on there uh, would be right in here where my finger's at. Ah, little LED, and that's being transmitted to this coil right here. So, yeah, trying to get that on the camera better. All right, well, let me turn the light back on. Notice uh, when I unplug the battery. There. Well, that sure is bright. Alright. When I unplug the battery, you hear the difference in the radio. See the spark gap down there inside the uh, little reed switch. Let me see if I can get the in there closer on the reed switch. You can see, uh, oh, hopefully you can see it. You see that uh, black in there, it's, uh, it's, it's doing a little bit, it's got burning up a little bit. There's, there's a spark across that gap. Anyway, that's the basics of a Tesla coil, and you can make them dirt cheap especially if you go out to like thrift stores and find one of these old uh, bug zapper fly swatters and if you want to make you a nifty little tesla coil to run some tests on you can actually take uh, add more capacitors to this system in order to make it uh, more uh, stronger so when it fires it fires harder and let me take uh, this loose from here for a moment I'll try this side here. Er. Alright, I'm try to show you the difference without shocking the crud out of myself. Because sometimes it'll jump through the wire. But I'm going to try to show you the difference between a uh, vacuum spark gap and, and the uh, knot. Alright. Yeah. Can't hold her steady long enough. Anyway, that's an open spark gap there. If I could hold the thing steady long enough, you can actually get it to uh, fire rapid. And, uh, ow, man! <laughs> Make sure that it's totally discharged before you touch it. Because it hurts. <laughs> oh, it really hurts. <laughs> Safety first. Don't learn about electrical safety by accident, folks. Man, I'll tell you what, those things have a lot of power. Let me see. There we go. Got my spark gap. That's why you want to do that first, because I'll tell you what, uh, there's people out there who are licking these things, and I tell you what, 
if you look on this side right here and you see there's four extra 500 volt capacitors on there can't remember how many microfarads but you sure as heck wouldn't want to lick this thing because it's like a turn your tongue black anyway I'm up on 15 minutes now I hope that this uh, video helps you out and it's really simple to make a Tesla coil if you need any help all you got to do is catch me on uh, Skype uh, same username as YouTube and then uh, if you uh, want to come on the radio show and talk about I can show you how to do that we're working on all kinds of different projects and with that said I'll try to end this video now so uh, if you want to last uh, listen to this thing the tuning in the residence resonance is the key and if you get it tuned up right you already have the power like yeah I don't know if you, yeah, I know you can't see me when I shock myself but uh, that that really hurt <laughs> and uh, anyway those are powerful little circuits so you can add to them you see how I put an external uh, deal on here with the breadboard for the transistor so I could try out different transistors and uh, you could actually uh, use this circuit right here to maybe engineer you a larger circuit and so uh, go get you one of these bug zappers if you can find them I think they, they have them uh, Harbor Freight and Walmart's last times I, last places I saw them I also uh, seen them online and I think I, uh, I think I moved something that, oh there we go yay There you go. She's a pulsing. Anyway, that's it. Take care, folks. Peace and love. Stay tuned because we're going to have the, uh, the um, Electro Man contest. Take care.